Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy New Year's Eve. Hope we all had a wonderful 2023 and hopefully a wonderful week as well. It's always kind of uh, exciting when the new year falls on a Monday. I always love that fresh start, fresh week. Uh, just kind of super cool all around. Uh, now we do have a lot to talk about in today's video, including I think uh, some stuff a lot of you are really going to like to hear, especially you snow lovers here on the East Coast. I've uh, been talking about this big pattern for a while. We just really haven't had a storm itself uh, kind of nailed down here, but I think going into uh, really a week from now, we've got a really good storm signal and really two of them that we're watching here uh, for all of you snow lovers on the East Coast. So definitely make sure you stay tuned throughout the video for the latest information on that. Uh, now, a couple other housekeeping things really quickly before we get started. Um, tomorrow morning's video will be my last video here uh, while I'm back home in the upstate before I'm back in Charlotte. So I do want you to know after tomorrow, the videos will be longer again and they will be more in depth. I've had a ton of questions about um, why I'm not covering weather on the West Coast or uh, maybe more other kind of broad areas. Uh, unfortunately, at my house, the internet just is not great. So the longest I can make these videos is about 15 to 17 minutes uh, while still getting them uploaded within any kind of reasonable amount of time. So uh, I do apologize about that, but it's just kind of the way things have had to be for the past week. But again, we will uh, kind of change that and get back to normal here to start the new year uh, on January 2nd. And then we'll hit the ground running going into 2024 uh, with more in-depth videos for everybody. And uh, hopefully that will help out a lot. Um, with all that said, though, uh, let's go ahead and jump on into the forecast because, again, uh, we are on limited time here and we do have a lot to discuss. Uh, now, taking a look out at uh, much of what's ongoing across the country right now, much quieter than we've seen uh, earlier parts of this week as that upper level low has finally moved away. Uh, however, we do ha uh, still have some stuff we're watching here. We've got kind of a bit of a clipper system moving on through the Midwest right now. That is going to bring some New Year's snow for a lot of folks here uh, over the next couple of, uh, really the next 24 hours or so. Uh, other than that, look at this swirl kind of off uh, the coast of California back out west. This has been doing a couple things. One, uh, it's been bringing a lot of wave action uh, for you folks in California. In fact, we've had a couple evacuation orders for some coastal communities. But the second thing it's going to do is this is going to be our next kind of uh, question mark storm. Uh, in fact, the models have been trending with this one a little more robust and potentially a little more wintry for some folks. Uh, and we'll take a look at that here in today's video. All right, now taking a look at radar, current alerts, watches, warnings, and kind of everything else you might need to know here to uh, end out 2023. Again, relatively quiet. However, we do have uh, some winter weather advisories up for sections of the Midwest from Chicago up towards Milwaukee, back towards uh, sections of eastern Iowa and uh, kind of surrounding areas there. Again, we are going to see some snow showers this afternoon from that clipper system as it moves on through. And I would be surprised later on today to see some of uh, these winter weather advisories maybe expanded further off towards the south and east, where we will also see some snow out of this storm system. Now, outside of there, really all clear for everyone else today. Uh, so I really uh, make sure to get out there and enjoy it because, again, I think going into this week ahead, we're going to get pretty crazy uh, pretty quickly again, especially towards uh, next weekend. All right, timing out this clipper system. Again, we got some snow that will be falling here kind of through uh, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, and uh, sections of Wisconsin throughout the day today. That will continue to kind of scoot on through uh, and eventually uh, working off into kind of the northeast by the time the sun is setting this evening. So I think much of Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania could get in on some of these rain and snow showers, but I think mostly snow showers. Uh, more likely to be rain, obviously, the further south you are here through eastern Kentucky and southern Ohio, but I definitely think some flakes will mix in there as well throughout the evening tonight. Uh, now moving this into about midnight tonight as we're kind of changing from uh, 2023 to 2024, still just some scattered snow and rain showers, uh, snow showers kind of in the higher elevations here of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and uh, probably some rain showers there into some of the lower elevations, but could definitely see some snow mixing in there at times. Now that continues overnight tonight and kind of turns into a bit of a northwest flow event throughout the overnight hours. So really most of the snow falling in the higher terrains of West Virginia tonight uh, before by the time we're waking up tomorrow, that precipitation kind of dies off a little bit. But you'll notice uh, by kind of these blue lines shaping up on your map and kind of this trough uh, moving on in, some colder air to definitely start 2023. And we've already had a pretty cold past couple of days as that upper level low moved on through and brought some cold air with it. Uh, and that looks to kind of stay the same here for the first uh, day or so of 2023. Definitely seeing that colder air. 
Uh, and uh, again, can't roll out some scattered rain and maybe even a couple snow showers here during our Monday afternoon through portions of the mid-Atlantic, but nothing blockbuster uh, as that kind of moves on away. And overnight, uh, Monday and getting into January 2nd, uh, that morning and afternoon, much clearer conditions, and we get into a little bit of a lull for the next couple of days, again, before things once again kind of go downhill here uh, going on into later this coming week. All right, snowfall totals today. Uh, this is how much you can expect uh, storm-wise uh, for uh, kind of sections of the Midwest here out of this clipper system. I think uh, sections of the northern shores of the UP of Michigan, a couple inches of snow not out of the question. Uh, about half an inch to an inch is going to be pretty widespread from Minneapolis down towards uh, Chicago and Milwaukee. Isolated spots here you'll notice uh, maybe a little bit higher uh, snowfall totals, but this really won't be a blockbuster storm for anybody. Nothing uh, this part of the country isn't used to this time of year. Um, so, you know, we'll definitely continue to watch the trends here, but um, overall, not anything uh, to write home about. Moving this, uh, excuse me, moving this on over towards the northeast. Um, again, some places are going to see a little bit more than others. I think the higher terrains of West Virginia are going to be the real winners here, about uh, one to three inches of snow likely, with the highest peaks getting three to five there, but... Um, you know, definitely a noteworthy system there. Same story here for kind of the Buffalo area. A couple inches of snow being called for by your local National Weather Service office. Uh, I think uh, the National Weather Service here kind of in the Cleveland area not showing much on their map. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to at least see a dusting in those areas, though. Same thing for kind of up here near Detroit. Uh, but either way, again, not really a blockbuster storm. Uh, you know, National Weather Service here agrees with their map as well. Alrighty, now let's kind of break down what's coming this week, and I've been talking for, you know, a while now about this wintry pattern, and uh, some people in the comments have been maybe not so nice about their opinion uh, on uh, my take here, uh, but I'm going to stick to my guns here, and I've stuck to them here for really since Christmas, talking about how I think the first two weeks of January uh, could be quite wintry for some folks, and uh, the overnight models are really starting to come together here and agree that we could see uh, at least one major storm system, I think, for somebody in the East Coast, potentially two of them. Uh, so we'll go ahead and break that down here for you with our latest model, starting with the GFS. Um, now, moving this ahead, again, we're going to get into a little bit of a lull kind of in the middle of the week, at least that Tuesday time frame, maybe even going into, uh, really set kind of a Monday into Tuesday. But as we go into Wednesday afternoon here, you'll notice uh, here's our first storm system, low pressure forming down here near the Gulf. Uh, and you'll notice here on the latest GFS model, we already are seeing some kind of uh, wintry colors showing up on the map pretty far south here. Some uh, light snow trying to break out here into southern um, Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia here. Uh, and as we go into the afternoon of Wednesday, I mean, look at this. We've got some snow showers in north Georgia, the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, rain south of there, kind of here into Florida, seeing some heavy rain out of this system. Uh, but definitely some snow trying to break out, and this is all due to all of this cold air we've had continuing to move on through the past couple of days. Uh, it's kind of reinforced itself, and the GFS continues these snow showers in northern Georgia, northern Alabama, the mountains of North Carolina, uh, throughout the day, Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening, and uh, eventually going into overnight Wednesday, uh, the storm kind of suppresses itself a little bit more, just meaning that precipitation is no longer uh, able to override where that cold air is. Uh, and going into um, kind of really the middle of the night between Wednesday and Thursday here, we've got rain along the Carolina and Georgia coastline and some kind of lake effect snow showers here uh, up into the northeast. Now, what happens next is really the important part. Uh, this is where the models are really beginning to disagree. We've got two pieces of energy here. Obviously, here in the subtropical jet, this is where the storm has been tracking and we've got that piece of energy. Uh, but notice how this trough is kind of now catching up to this piece of energy. When this happens, a lot of the times they try to merge, and we could see these two storm systems um, kind of try uh, to um, connect somewhere here in the northeast. Should that happen, we could get a pretty big time snowstorm for somebody, and you'll notice on the latest GFS, uh, the storm system really ramps up, and it's just offshore. We've got cold air in the northeast. Storm system's just a little too far off the coast here, and this thing really bombs out, and we've got an all-out blizzard uh, just off the coast of New England. And if you're watching in Nova Scotia, uh, latest GFS absolutely hammers you with a blizzard here going into... Are um, about that Thursday Friday time frame uh, time frame excuse me uh, before that moves on out. Now if that one misses, okay, you know that's one storm system we were close didn't quite get there, but here comes a second storm system and this is the one we've really been watching. I've been talking about for a couple days now. I've said that January seventh time frame is one I'm really watching 
and uh, overnight models continuing to hint at the potential for a storm system in that time frame. Uh, latest GFS model all starts here next Friday. We've got snow breaking out in uh, Albuquerque uh, up through the northern Texas panhandle and into sections of western Oklahoma and Kansas as low pressure begins to kind of get its act together here over the southern plains. Uh, now eventually here in the GFS, snow continues to move on in here through Kansas, uh, sections of Missouri, Iowa, and eventually towards the Ohio River Valley. Uh, latest GFS, all rain here in the southeast, though, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, a rainy Friday and Saturday, uh, kind of showing up here on this model run. And as we move this further ahead in time, uh, we get into kind of Saturday night, and we've got a pretty strong low pressure system here right over the heart of Alabama, uh, bringing very heavy rainfall into sections of Georgia and the Carolinas. But also, we've got high pressure up here uh, kind of near Quebec and uh, other sections of uh, eastern Canada and some of these French-speaking areas. And uh, thanks to that, uh, we've got cold air that is getting funneled in the backside here. Uh, so we've got a nice shield of cold air to work with here through the northeast, through the Ohio River Valley, uh, and very strong low pressure to the south. If you've looked at any of my thumbnails over the past week, this is basically the picture I've been putting on there. Uh, low pressure over the south, uh, cold air up north, and kind of snowflakes here in between. This is the pattern I've been talking about, and uh, here we are now only about a week away, not even quite that far, and the latest GFS cranks the storm up. We've got all-out snow conditions and heavy snow conditions through the Ohio River Valley uh, up into the northern mid-Atlantic for you folks up into Virginia, latest GFS giving you some heavy snowfall. Uh, and eventually, moving this further ahead into time, we've got an all-out nor'easter near blizzard conditions just a week out from now through much of the northeast. Uh, again, I'll start, or not start this because I'm well into this, but let me remind you, this is not a forecast. Um, I like the idea of this. I think we will have a storm system bringing snow somewhere, but the details here kind of ignore those. And just look at the overall idea that we've got a major storm system bringing snow uh, through the mid-Atlantic, through the northeast, and eventually uh, that moves out going into kind of the 8th or so of January. Now that's the GFS model. Let's take a look at the European and let's see, do we have any agreement between the two? Well, we'll kind of move this ahead. Here's the first storm system on the European, much uh, further south, much uh, more suppressed, but it does even bring a little bit of mixed precipitation here. The European's been hinting at that a little bit. Uh, maybe some kind of rain sleet mix here through sections as far south as central Mississippi and Alabama as we have just enough cold air left over here uh, going into this coming Wednesday. No real impacts here on the European though. Uh, now we have to ask ourselves the same question we did with the GFS. Here we go, nothing too crazy in the southeast with the European run, but does it connect with this cold energy up north, uh, and can we ride this up the coast and get a snowstorm out of it? Uh, latest uh, European model here says not quite. They connect, it's just too far um, offshore, and uh, by the time they're connecting, it's really off the map here and well into the Atlantic. Again, though, that's just one storm. Well, here's the second one. Uh, what's this one going to do? Uh, European model here, continuing to move this ahead. Same idea, snow through Albuquerque uh, in New Mexico, up through Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, eventually getting into Missouri and the Ohio River Valley. And we've got the same general setup going into next weekend. Strong low pressure over the deep south and high pressure here up to the north, trying to funnel some cold air in uh, to kind of supply this. Uh, and then on the European model, again, very rainy in the southeast, but here comes that wintry precipitation in the northern mid-Atlantic, some ice in the higher elevations, and then uh, watch as the snow breaks out here over the northeast, and we've got agreement in our models just a week out for the potential of a nor'easter with um, you know very strong low pressure and very heavy snowfall for somebody in the northeast. And uh, then that moves on through, and again, uh, should I uh, show you the snowfall totals here, which I'm not going to because I'm not a madman, um, this would be quite crazy. Um, but again, we're at the stage right now where we're just looking for agreement, and the models have them. They are both showing the potential for a winter storm up the East Coast uh, next weekend, and maybe even one before that. All right, showing you these snowfall uh, percent chances, here's the first storm going into this Thursday, Friday, latest GFS model. Nothing uh, blockbuster, but we definitely do have a signal. About uh, one to three in every 10 model uh, members showing some sort of snowfall here over the Mid-South and up into the Ohio River Valley and eventually into the Northeast as some of those models, again, kind of ride that first storm up the coast. Uh, as for the second storm, a very strong signal over uh, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Kansas for some snow here going into later this week coming up and towards the weekend. And even those snowfall uh, probabilities increasing through the Ohio River Valley, through the Mid-Atlantic, and through the Northeast. 
uh, going into next weekend. So that's the GFS ensemble members, European ensemble members. Uh, first storm system, much lower chances of any kind of snow in the Mid-South. Uh, there are very small chances, maybe one in every 10 ensemble members uh, show some sort of wintry precipitation, but I really think more of a rain, maybe some rain sleet uh, mixing in there with the first storm here, at least on the European. We'll see uh, as the short range models get a little closer what they say uh, by the time we get into really about Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, now, European, again, doesn't really like the chances too much of any kind of heavy snow with the first storm, but here comes the second one. High snowfall probabilities through New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, even kind of the Ozarks of Arkansas and Missouri. The European likes that area for some snow. And then eventually going into this weekend, high snow probabilities through Appalachia and up into the Northeast. Look at these probabilities now. Uh, getting past 50% chance of at least an inch of snow here more than a week away through much of the interior Northeast. And chances also there along the I-95 corridor before again, that storm system moves on out. Uh, now, very quickly here, uh, talking about um, something from the National Weather Service here. They also agree they have introduced probabilities for winter storm potential here about seven days out. Right now, they're bullseyeing the Appalachia chain from North Carolina upwards. Uh, but as we get closer, I would expect these chances to increase and kind of overspread and overtake some more areas uh, as we get a little closer here in time. Alrighty, again, a lot of information there. I know it was quick, but as I talked about in the beginning of the video, we'll get back to normal uh, routine here going into Tuesday and really hit the ground running through much of 2024. Uh, with all that said, though, if you did like the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment and let me know where you're watching from. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your 2023 here tonight, and I will see you all tomorrow to start 2024.